dear diary, I'm not stupid. I do know everyone must pay taxes. Late payers will be penalised. I had 40 years of work, made 100 documentary films for television. I feel a lecture coming on me. And stomping, barnstorming people's rights, championing stuff. I made a thousand radio programs of length and substance and quality. Radio 4 until it dumbed down. And I wrote when I was wanted. The attitude of living right. That's my house, can you see it? Up to the roof. It's different to the others, that roof. It was my home, 30 years. And uh, I lived there with my friend, Bryn. And he died last year. It was very, it was, it was a bit grim, really. In the last year, he had a job to walk around this block. And he would stop about here, his, his, his hand on my arm supporting him. And he'd look up at the roof and he'd say, he'd say, Ray, go on, look up at the roof. <laughs> Come back down, come on. <laughs> he, that's all he'd say, just Ray. Because the tiles on that roof are rosemary tiles. And they cost £4,000 extra. I didn't know everything would collapse like it did. That £4,000 could have saved us. Can you try and hold this door with your foot? This is the front room. The colours were chosen by Bryn. I remember a friend, Marcus Lucas Hilarious. He'd never been in a place like this, and he, he looked at it all and he said, oh, I said, Bryn, it's Hollywood. Oh, it was. A Hollywood for all kinds of dropouts and poorer people. And there is a fireplace, the cast iron and the tiles. Bryn brought and this marble fireplace managing to get it here without cracking or damaging it from a flat we lived in oh, 30, 35 years ago just round the corner we were evicted from it so that they could demolish it this is my room it's where I work where I sit and think, and sometimes where I just sit. The writings I did were mainly for ITV1, Radio 4. Sometimes I went abroad, but mostly it was subjects of our life, often with poorer, offbeat places, and I never made much money portraying the underbellies of normalness, the small things, the working class. I'm not sure anyone does that on the media, what I did. Not now. All this at the Barton Dock end of Trafford Park is a planner's dream, a sketch of what an artist thinks the future ought to be like. Here there is total motorway access and ingress, roads ten times wider than the Bridgewater Canal, and no awkward little community of houses stuck in the middle. No church, no shops, nothing like that at all. No people, no company this end of Trafford Park is going to be obliged, as Metro Vickers were, to aid the neighbourhood, because there isn't a neighbourhood. No company here will be asked to provide a float for the pageant in the streets across the road because there aren't any streets across the road. 
total segregation between factories and houses. I've got to work out what to say to my lawyer, Victoria. Now there's a story that they tell about a certain man. He was the greatest detective in the hall of the land. He didn't bother with statistics, ballistics and such. He had what you might call the positive touch. He came to me originally with debts, general debts, utility debts, his council tax debt, housing overpayment of housing benefit. In amongst all of that, he then tells me that there's been a petition for his bankruptcy, which immediately sets off alarm bells, because at the end of the day, you know, that, it's, that's big business, that means there's, there's a real problem. The debt I had was £5,000 to VAT tax. I got no work, but I was working hard trying to get new work. Whether guilty or not, the point is that somebody's got to get shot. This time it didn't happen. You know, at the end of the day, he owes quite a substantial, substantial sum, and therefore we, we have to be offering a lump sum payment of quite a substantial amount with a view to them making further payments later on. The fines to back tax got just added on, and Bryn was dying. The problem is, your, your biggest asset is this house, right? I know it means an awful lot to you, all right? From a personal point of view, I can really, I can understand that. I have to advise you, though, and I have to, we have to be realistic. That house has a certain amount of equity. I was quite lucky I was so poor. I could get some legal aid. All right, he knows you've got this, this asset, um, and it's his job to get the credit to deal with... He acts on behalf of the creditors. It's his job to get the creditors paid off. Well, I'm raised tenant, and I've been here now for six or is it seven years? And that was when Bryn was still alive, of course. Um, and things have changed quite a lot since then, uh, particularly since this February, uh, when I had the week from hell. Uh, about the, was it the third week in February, um, my uncle died very suddenly, unexpectedly. And in the same week, Ray discovered that he'd got the court order to vacate the premises, including me, of course, in two weeks' time. Unfortunately, this, uh, this, this order had been on the shelf for two weeks already. He hadn't bothered opening his mail for two weeks. It has always been for me a rule of life not to open, necessarily, mail when it arrives. I was taught it by a, a friend and an older man who was my mentor, really, when I was young, a essayist, novelist, Colin McInnes. And he would pick up a letter that came for him and he would look at it and he would say, uh, it says urgent on, but to whom? To whom is it urgent? To me or to the sender? This is from the Inland Revenue. So I got myself a solicitor and we got into court the day before we would have been thrown out. We've had a few near misses and the court are not going to continue to bear with you and, and, and every, you know, every time they give an eviction date they're not going to continue to let you have a give, have a, give a reason why it, shouldn't, it should go by this time and, and have another chance. There is a strong chance that you will be evicted and you really, really must think about getting your bits together. I say bits, I mean, getting the, all these papers together and getting the important stuff out of the house. Dear diary, the BBC have definitely now said they want to make a documentary about my fall. I know what they'd like, for dramatic purposes, they'd like to end it with my eviction. And it's the first work I've had, big scale work, for two, three, four years, I suppose. <laughs> When I worked, I did pay loads of tax. Now, I sign on. 
But to raise the money to save my house in this archive is horrendous because fines are increasing. The sum going up every hour. I resent asking for help. When if friends did help, it would so all be to line the pockets of administrators and not help me. What did they do? I am trying to do something about things, you know what I mean? I've, I've got this application, which is what I'm going to try and do today for the Royal Literary Fund. And the woman in charge of it uh, made the visit earlier this week. Uh, they need to know how much, you know, height, telephone, lighting, heating, all those sort of things, liabilities. They also need to know uh, published works. What happened was instead of books, I went into this more collaborative form of writing for radio and the telly, to begin with about myself, me working class and rock and roll roots. Well, I was born in 1939 and I spent all of my childhood in Northampton. It was a small town. I can remember the countryside within minutes walk and television. But me, I'm a nobody. No tradition, no proper accent, and I'm even worse. I'm not even a Bromet. And they're the Royal Literary Fund. They're really for writers who've done little poems all their lives, rather than people who've been in the media. When they were created, the Royal Literary Fund, the media didn't exist. So I've got to sort of prove myself a bit. And she said I can send tapes in. I don't know how many, she, she said, choose, you know, three or four. I like ordinary people, and I can't get rid of my class consciousness. I've never been able to live with any but working class people, and yet instead of moving in with a plain and decent family, or staying at home with mum, I set up a home of my own, and it attracts the lame dogs and ducks and drakes, people often rejected by the very working class I want to be with. Always I lived close to poverty, among poor people. I've known of bankruptcy and debt, evictions and bailiffs all my life. Made programmes about people in trouble. Loads. Socially unacceptable behaviour. When you're doing well and expecting to do better, you do spend. Spend to enjoy and spend to prove. Yes, please. Fish and chips, once. It's a competitive world. There's no health warning on any of these cards. This one? Bailiffs rule. They get in by devious means. Ray? Yeah. You in? Yeah. Remember Fred and the yeah. fire brigade? Oh. Letter from the solicitor. What's the visitor? I've, I've, yeah, all, I've had two. You've only got one. Oh, no, it's the little, tiny little bit of money I owe to Granada TV Rentals. Your failure to comply could result in a debt collector calling upon you. Arr, what's your say? I have now received notice from the court that the trustee in bankruptcy has complied with all the regulations and the matter will shortly proceed. Every legal move costs me, and they'll have the lot. But I can't shift. I've nowhere to go. On or before the 13th of August, the following steps must be taken. They have never been here to see things. I keep writing. Let me stay. Have the house when I can't cope. But this exchange of letters spells out another stay of execution. Or other person helping with the process. That's rather good, isn't it? The stuff that I wrote is in boxes or, or somewhere over there. So what I'm going to try and do, and I haven't done this for some time, is do a clamber over here. Are you all right there? You, you, you stay there until I get to the other side, at least. You got to accentuate the positive and elim. I need the negative and latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. <laughs> it's not living. 
It's never been living. It's a teddy bear. Have faith. A pandemonium's liable to walk up on the sea. I mean, they haven't been open for years, these boxes. A Fabian pamphlet I wrote called uh, Lady Albemarle's Boys. I doubt whether the pamphlet's in here. You see, it's again the question of what, what will be in here. Oh, look. Look, I'd forgotten about this. This is a, 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 a real genuine teddy boy tie. <laughs> If it wasn't for the Royal Literary Fund the needing some money, they wouldn't even they wouldn't even come out these things. I did loads and loads of places in Britain. Oh, what did I say? I didn't say that, did I? I just do not know. It gets odder and odder. And nobody understands what I'm driving at. I know you think. Looking at this room, I don't know where anything is and that I don't know where some things are. But there was originally a system. Because I did a lot of English things, it's organised all the shelving around here on a proper geological, geographical... Maybe I need a second life, you know, to do, to do this sorting. You're a sweetheart if there ever was one, if there ever was one, it's you. Life without you was an incomplete dream. You are every sweet dream come true. If your friend who you've lived with happens to be of the same sex and the same size and they die and you happen to be poor you inherit their wardrobe these were my ah my underpants that they, they had you know there's some worse you can't show them that brinata well i can and Brins, Brins were a lot better than mine. Lawrence is asking if does everybody go to heaven? Everybody go to heaven? Yeah. Oh, I don't know about that at all. And these are, are Brins underpants. They're, they're, they're all very good. And I've, I've come into them, you see. This was Brins dressing gown. We had a West Indian tailor called Oscar. He was a Christian. Uh, Seventh-day Adventist, I think. Round the, round the corner he lived. And Bryn wanted a dressing gown made, and he made this dressing gown for Bryn. So, isn't that beautiful? That's Bryn, and there's Sam, who had black hair then. But it's just a shame that he had to go this way. It really is in pain. Tests at the hospital showed that he'd got pancreatic cancer. You don't leave somebody at a time like that. Bugger the bloody bankruptcy. This is the big hospital where my friend Bryn came for the big, big operation and then into intensive care, which is on floor C. He came back about nine months later to be told that uh, the operation hadn't worked and the cancer had come back. He didn't want to leave. leave. We, had, we had a row here in this car park, a great terrible row, because I wanted to take him home. And he didn't, he, 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 felt, he felt it was his happy holiday home. But I persuaded him to come home, and then weeks passed and he died. 
brought him back here to die on floor E up there. Now it's uh, time for me to go in here. Ironically, I had cancer. I had a cancer in, me, in, me, in there, in my bone, when I was a child. And then I had loads and loads and loads of radiotherapy. So later on, I got a skin cancer, but it's, it's controllable, you see. It's different with cancer when it's deep down, like Brin's was, when it's a pancreas. Difficult to spot it. It's easy with skin. When he came first of all, as usual, what you get is just a letter through the post. I thought, I knew that name, I knew that name. And when he came, of course, it was the Ray Gosling, you know. And so we spend most of our time talking about his um, radio programmes and the telly that he's done and whatever, as part of just sorting out what the difficulty was. At the beginning, there were quite a lot of difficulties. I now just see him every two, three months. All oh, right. So everything's been happening to you. It does a bit, yeah. So, when did you see the professor? About a month ago. Was it? Good news, there's nothing wrong with your skin. Well, okay, you've got a reprieve from me again today. It must be the last two or three times. <laughs> so, I, I don't need to do anything with that. No. Okay? No dabbing with the hot stuff. No dabbing with the hot stuff, no. all, the, all the cold stuff. Okay? Right. He went, for his holiday, he went to Peru. Didn't you? You went to Peru. I did. I did. But before I went to Peru, I told you I went to a second-hand bookshop uh -huh. and I found that. Oh, you bugger! <laughs> <laughs> Bloody dreadful old, old <laughs> son! <laughs> I tell you, my mother was so embarrassed by that book, she used to go around second-hand bookshops buying them up. <laughs> <laughs> this is the publisher's copy. You know, I'm, I have nothing better to do in my spare time then wander around second hand bookshops. Book so what do you want me to do? Oh, you sign it for do me. Do you? Where do I sign it? In there. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. To Les? Yeah. Just Les? Les? Yeah. And now I'll sign my name? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much. I've had two days in bed. Pissed off. Geoffrey Barnard is unwell. Doesn't happen to me often. But I've had two days depressed. It's not the eviction, it's not the bankruptcy. It's I've got no money. I've not I've not even got the bus fare to go and see me alien father. And I was promised real earnings. For the first time for four years? From the BBC for doing this for you. Oh, it's on its way, they said to me two days ago. So I took to my bed two days ago. There are some days, some parts of some days, where I feel like I've a rabbit when faced with a ferret, just stunned, paralysed. Come on, do me in. It gets to me, the bankruptcy, the fact they can evict you at any moment. They choose. While it took so long to get any social security, well, I was so desperate and Bryn were dying. I didn't want to be like this. Yeah, they're following me round for a day. Who oh, is? Oh, I'm not a bloody superstar at all. Why? What's happened? No. No, I'm not incognito. It's a nice feeling. I've got it. One week's. And I'm on the top whack. £70. I couldn't get any more unless I was... Uh, unless I made myself disabled. Never ever seen anybody picking their gyro up without they, they, they bring the cards with them. So today I've paid 13 on water. I, I paid 15 on the phone. I paid 15 on the electric card. That's, that's the electric card. 12 because I'm a week behind on the gas. People are always paying a little bit of what they do, you know, making an effort. I'm left with 40 pounds. It's all right. 
See you later. Back at the house. My advice to anybody else in, in, in this sort of situation is sign on at once. I didn't because I'd, I'd had 40 years where I never never needed to do that. I'd, work had always popped up. You know, I was, I was having a particularly bad spell. There were friends who did, 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 did help out a little bit. You know, they... It wasn't a question of pride, actually. It was a question of couldn't believe it. You know, I mean, the, the, around the corner, somebody, somebody was going to turn up. I'd get this proposal in. And sometimes I'd need money, you know, to do proposals, to do the research, because by that time I'd, I'd, I'd sold things, so I'd, I'd get one or two friends who did help. You know, give you 500 here to do... It costs money to put these proposals in. You're doing, you're doing travel and hotels and sussing things out. And it, and that that's a good idea that is and and that'll 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 work and you'd get somebody at Channel Four and they'd say that's a great idea Ray we're going to put that put that th through and you you felt optimistic and things like that. so what's the, what do you want to sign on for? I've put you down. I've got a minder with me, Margaret. Morning, right? Yeah, morning. In those days, there used to be a pole there, didn't there? They did, Like a yes. queue system, and you used to pull a ticket. Where's my... There it is. And there'd be a big uh, screen over there which, where, where your number came up. You'd go along the job things. A breakfast team player, that's, that's in a buffet, £3.81. £3.60, £3.20 an hour. That's in Hailing Island. <sighs> I remember once a clerk saying to me, what have you been doing looking for work? You know, and I said, I've, I've been along them cards. And she said, you're supposed to come in here, not just from signing on day, you're supposed to come in here every, every day, you're supposed to be looking for work. Ah. Oh. I have a theory that there's sort of secret information on those screens that say, give him a hard time or give him an easy time. That's what I think. You won't, you won't tell me whether there is no, or isn't. No, there definitely there not? isn't. Is there not? No, it's but it definitely was a, it just was personal a, details. It was a lottery which clerk you got, because you could have nice ones. You also could be in a in a in a bad mood yourself. Mm. Right, it's on now. I had months signing on, getting nothing. Then the week of Bryn's funeral, I got sorted with the gyro book. But now. Working this little bit for the BBC, I've had to sign off. Tony Blair is uh, going to say the poor should do more to help themselves. <laughs> like what? I am doing what I can, Tony Blair. I'm trying to learn. I'm making an effort. What did they do when everything looked so dark? And you said you got to accentuate the positive. Quite optimistic. Be sure to latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. You got to move the mouse down. They're not as easy as you think. Exit. Don't mess with that man, Mr. In Between. Right, this is for the first time on the letter dated 19th of July 2000 and I got made bankrupt over 18 months ago. For the first time I've got a list of who I owe money to. The debt list is now £50,000. And only one human being, one private person in the list. The bulk is estimates to tax and government department fines. And it's the government who are going to have to support me if I'm evicted. I 
dad died yesterday. He was 89 and a half. I never told him about these present troubles because, well, he was very old and what could, what could he do? He'd only have worried. <sighs> We're a poor family. He worked all his life, mended motor cars, but always in somebody else's garage, always an employee, employee. Hello. Hi Ray, how are you? Take a seat. Sorry to hear about your father. Yeah, I was yeah. 89 and a half. So yeah, yeah. I was very old. You got me letters then? I did, yes, definitely. Yeah. Two yeah. of them. Yeah. One, one about your dad and then... And I've got yours. Later, tell me what you want to do. Yes, 26th of July, 14th of August. You've opened. Yeah, I've opened a lot. Lovely. Don't smirk at me. <laughs> First things first, then. We haven't had an eviction notice. No, not yet. Which is good. Yeah. That's presumably because they've not gone straight for the jugular with the bailiffs, because obviously they're waiting to hear from us with regard to these proposals from friends and... Right. Um, the Royal, is it the Royal Literary, Literary Fund? Yeah. Which is good. OK. Oh, the yeah. latest reprieve, all right, is that everything's on hold while we're waiting, waiting for them to decide and let us give us some figures as to what they'll be prepared to accept lump sum-wise. I'm off now, my dear. OK. See you when I see you. Yes, Ray. Right, okay. Nice to see you again. The situation now is that Ray will either be served with a date for eviction, another date, or they will see our way and think, yes, OK, there are some reasonable proposals. Ray comes up with proposals for payment that, we, that they can accept. Now there's a story that they tell about a certain man He was the greatest detective in the hall of the land He didn't bother with statistics, ballistics and such He had what you might call the positive touch For while old Dick Tracy and Mike Hammer too Were snooping all around looking for a clue You're, you're partly mm. responsible for all this Because there was your mm. bit in the Evening Post Yeah Which would be back in March And that mm, sort of snowballed into a piece in the Daily Telegraph and he said, would, would you turn it into a film? It's the only contract I've bloody got. I've come off the dole. I've still got my gyro book. They haven't yet told me to hand it in. In a way, like a lot of people, I was better off when I was on the dole. What they have done after 18 months yeah. is they've supplied me with a list. The list includes one, one human being. The old accountant who lives on Hayden Road, Brian West. What I owe him is £905. Who's your biggest creditor? The biggest creditor now, I now owe £7,000 to the Department of Trade. What for, my pal? They would say in the office, wouldn't they? But um, I, get th I get this. Seven thousand pounds. The development trade for you. I mean, looking back at the whole thing, is there any way you think you could have gone out of this mess earlier? Yeah, yeah, of course there is. Yeah, I could have got out of the mess earlier if, when the debt was like five grand, I'd have paid it, which I could have done. But you didn't. I could have done it by remortgaging the house. I could have done it by, by borrowing five grand off friends. Mm. I didn't do because Brim was, Brim was dying. You got to access, you ain't the positive and he lives. I need the negative and latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess the mister in between. Ken. Oh. Ken. Yeah, yeah. I've known Ken nearly all my life. He's a <laughs> intellectually, he's a left wing, but a good gardener. And he says I could come and do your garden sometime. The only one I'm fussed about is this one here, and it it was Bryn's favourite rose, and it was a Vivian Lee rose. But it's got a bit has lovely red flowers on, mm, and it flowers flowers, flowers nearly mm. all the year. There's one of those on Bryn's grave. Yeah. Well, do you want a cup of tea, or do you want a glass of wine? A uh, cup of tea would be grand. Would you? Yeah. yeah. yeah.
If I lose everything, you shouldn't lose a place on tidy, should you? When you leave somewhere, you shouldn't poo all over the carpet. That's what burglars do. That's in another kind of category. I'm not like that. No. We'll do the garden up for the garden's sake. Well, since I last saw you, it's now beginning of November. Uh, things were looking fairly optimistic then, but a little less so now. A bit bare. It is, isn't it? Our barrister confirmed that at the end of the day, you should be prepared to give up possession of the property. And I know you have already made emergency plans just in case. So we're going to take these down then, aren't we? Well, I don't want dying. There'll be a case conference on the 18th of December, um, which I'm invited to if I want to attend. Uh, and I probably shall. Um, where the situation will be clarified. One way or the other. Hello. Hello, how are you? I didn't reply to your letter. I'm well. Are you well? I'm not so bad. Yeah, I meant to reply to it, but I didn't really reply to it because there's not very much to, to, to tell say. you of importance. Right. What about the Royal Literary Fund, Ray? I right. don't know. And to inquire would be impolite, Right. Really. Well, that's what I thought. despite impoliteness, yes. we're going to have to be. Well, I'm, if, if you'd rather I wrote... No, I'd rather you didn't. Right. But I'm... I, I am being saying. pressed for a response, Ray. I've got to give... I know I, I say to you I seem to think it's a lump sum, etc. Yes, I know. But I've got to give them a, a response. I've got to speak to Lutton's Dunford. I've got to come up before, with some, some, some solutions to this problem. Before the day? Problem. Before the December the 18th? Yes, because that case management conference is... Although you are a party to those proceedings, yeah. all right, it is really... The reason why that case management conference has been set is because Chris, his solicitors, have filed a defence on the basis that he ought to remain in the property for yeah. all the reasons that we've discussed right. before. Because they've filed a defence, the matter is being going to be listed for trial, yeah. right? So that's why we need a case management conference for the court to order directions, for the court to say what needs to happen right. before that trial takes place. Now, whilst you were a party to that, we have no defence to this action, right. right? Unlike Chris, who does. So although there's a hearing on December the 18th, that doesn't mean that the action against you stops. Yeah, but I'm not going to be evicted before December the 18th, You I? could well be. I don't think so. At the end of the day, Ray, you've got a house there that they know means, could, if it was sold, means that they would be paid. Well, my feeling now is that if it comes to that at the end of the day, then they'll just have to put me out. I, I think I'd rather let them just chuck me out and have nothing. But where and be you homeless. live, Ray? Well, I'd just sign on the homeless then. I've had my year of, of, of remembering Bryn in the house, and, and I'm grateful for that. And but you've got to live somewhere. A flat or a house no, in, in St no, Anne's or in yeah, Ice no, and Green, I'd, Radford? I'd, no, I'll just leave it. But I want you to look for somewhere else to live in the meantime. I'm not going to. There's no point of being homeless. It's, re it's just stubbornness, isn't oh, it? It might be. According to me, it has to be them that do it. I'm not doing it to myself. Right. I cannot commit suicide. If they want to kill me, suicide. no, no. You if are. they want to kill me off, they kill me off. It, you know, it's not a game, Ray, is it? It's it's serious. They will take the house. Mm. They have done it before now. If they could, if we had to string them on this far, mm. and I'm only happy to string them on if I really think there's a serious hope that there that somebody's going to come up with some more money for you. I don't like going cap in hand. I don't know how much time we've got. I feel resentful that the debt should be so much because so much has now got to go to De Lupton, Cooper, Price, Waterhouse and people who I never owed anything to originally. And why should I ask friends and people who want to be supporters to help pay that lot off? Why not let them do their damn nest? You know why Mrs Thatcher was so keen on a property-owning democracy? It was 
so that people could have something that could be taken off them. And the threat of having it taken off them would keep them in line. And unfortunately, I've got this property. So I can't win. This is the Crown and County Court. And I've got to appear this morning. The judge has called in the trustee in bankruptcy, myself and Chris, the lodger, to try and uh, move things forward, I think. So I'll let you know what happens in about half an hour's time. And yet again, it was another reprieve. This time, until the spring of 2001. If you weren't as stubborn and as rebellious and as unfrightened, they would have you. They would eat you up for breakfast and you'd be broken person completely. That's what's wrong, you know. Anyone given to panicking would have given up a long time ago. Ah. <sighs> what was a £5,000 debt to the VAT. And that was on estimates and their estimates. And penalty fines has become £50,000. My talent was always small, but I used it, and I used it best I could to try and help people more vulnerable than me. But here we are. <laughs> Some madness. I'm still here. I didn't expect to be. Happy Christmas, my little friend. You got to accentuate the positive and elim. I need the negative and latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. You gotta the whole house, you know, it's all just absolutely stacked full of... It's, it's crammed now because I've had to empty everything that was in my father's house. Some of the stuff's wonderful. He kept uh, scrapbooks, you know, of everything I did, book reviews and, that he found out about. Man, he said you got to accent you ain't the positive and he limb. I need the negative. This is the big set piece for the town. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. Welcome to me home from home for a week. Welcome to Golden Sands. The divide in St. Ives is quite simple. This side of the street, they paint puppy dogs. That side, whatever it is in their heads. Now, this is not what's meant by the Archbishop of a bonfire society. This is... Yes. They say they have to do it. It's the Lewis tradition. This is a stuffed hope about to be blown sky high. The trouble with you is that you hesitate. Ain't it the truth? Class dismissed. Six months since you were last here, and things were looking pretty doomy and gloomy at that point. However, since then, I had a much more cheerful letter from my solicitor. Uh, she has apparently twisted the trustee's arm into conceding on my tenancy. I haven't paid any rent at all yet since February which was the date from which I was supposed to be paying rent to the uh, trustees. But I haven't paid anything yet, and they haven't asked for anything, and I've not had no written agreement. The situation for Ray is just as it was. He's still liable to be put out on the street. There's some quite... quite a little bundle I have properly organised now of... The, oh, that one fell down. Uh, of important things I've got to do. They're trying to cut me off everything, you see, because once you are not signing on the DSS, you lose all 
the sort of mitigation, all the leniency that they might be showing you is gone. So that will be the gas. They want to cut me off the gas. I thought this morning I, would, I was done for. They want to cut me off the electric. About eight o'clock. I'm now eligible again to pay the full council tax. And I thought the, the, the bailiffs are bursting the door. Because I'm not signing on. But it wasn't the bailiffs. It was, it was this. I think I've just got to try and sign back on again. I think I know what this is because I had one Saturday. But these are bailiffs for council tax. Free book. And my lawyer has sort of abandoned me, I think. No, she wants to just carry on. She wants me to contact her as soon as possible to update me as to the current situations and whether you've had any further dealings with the trustee in bankruptcy and with an update as to your proposals for settling the debt. It's stalemate all round. I'll phone her secretary up. I feel a bit sorry I do for poor Vicky because she's a very nice girl and I don't think she's met anybody like me before. We don't have to have been in this situation. We could have dealt with this much sooner, taking the same steps that we're taking now, um, without the need for the possession proceedings to have taken place or without the creditor to actually said, let's take possession proceedings, we've got to get him out of that house to get our money. Oh. Eviction doesn't happen straight away, so people mustn't get frightened of that. You know, it, it is... It is a serious result. It is something that really ca could happen. I don't think I want people to think that, you know, oh, it won't happen to me and, and OK, they threaten eviction, but it's not going to happen. It is something that can and does happen. But there is a long way between them threatening eviction and it actually happening when you can negotiate. So it's important to talk to your creditors. Thirty-five years from this house, me and Bryn used to walk to the polling station to vote together. No matter where I was, what I'd been doing, I'd always try and get back for voting day, national or local. But actually who to vote for, we always kept a secret from one another. It is a secret ballot. And Bryn had been, uh, I mean we're both libertarians, but Bryn had been a supporter of me back in the early days when I stood as a madman here in Nottingham in a council election. This was before the monster raving loony party, before Dave Such, uh, I stood as a madman. So I was the sort of godfather, really, of uh, the monster raving loony party. It's Mr. Gosling. In the box. In the box, yes, please. They are. Bye-bye. See ya. I've done it. I've done what I wanted to do. Hmm. <laughs> this time I've done it in my own pen. I don't know whether that's legal or not. But I like that. Anyway. Anyway. It's sad on your own. There was... One memorable occasion we came here, me and Bryn. It would have been 1979. The time when she got in first. And maybe the emotion of the occasion had got to me. And when we come out, I must have let some clue slip, enough for Bryn to say, you didn't. You voted for her. I did, I voted for Mrs Thatcher, first time. And I voted Labour, 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 and I voted for her, first time. When we got back to the house, we walked from here to the house, we walked in silence. When we got back to the house that night, bottles did fly. Aye, from him to me. I've 
very nearly didn't do what I did do. I was moved by that sort of election poster up there. I don't want the Tories to get in. I, I don't like this current lot of Tories at all. I suppose I use the luxury of being fairly certain it'll be a Labour victory to do what I did. What I did was with my felt tip pen, I spoilt my ballot paper. I thought of writing swear words, but I didn't. I wrote very politely, as my mother told me, not this time, thank you. The silver band is marching because it is election week, the second election of 1974. That is what we're against. That is what this election is about. And I believe that once again, as in 1945, it is Wales and socialism as we understand it in Wales, which can help to save the whole of the rest of the country too. The BBC are sponsors. They say they like what they've seen so far, but they want a bit more. Can you make it longer? Ray, do you want to go anywhere? Ooh, I said. Abroad? Because, well, in me time, I mean, I've still got a green card, so I could work in the USA. And I've been, oh, I've been all over. <clears throat> They're Bristol-based, the film crew. <clears throat> they said, well, 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 we were thinking of South Wales. Got one. Here we are. Here we got one. What you know? All right. You ready? Right. Come on, Bonnie. Good. Now, as it happens, I've a penchant for Wales. I've done oh, a lovely documentary film for Granada up in the north. Welcome to my home from home for a week. Welcome to Golden Sands. I've got this caravan. It's £15 for the week through a last-minute Cotton Town cancellation from a lady near Wigan. And it's in a prime position, right on the front. Come on in. And two down in the south. This was the colliery. I went down. could stand in the galleries, but when they filled in the shaft, there was coal left still, enough for donkey's years ahead, but they shut it. Ebervale's eggs are still in one steel basket. And when I was there, 9,000 people, a third of the population, worked in there. In this valley, the Welsh clichés have not died. There is blood on the coal and in the furnace. This valley made sense. Coal mined at the bottom end. In the hills at the top, iron ore originally and lime Mix it all together in the steelworks and you get steel. It made sense, just as my life made sense. But now the steelworks is to be finished. The coal is not to be mined, though it's there, as I can function, but I'm unemployed. Mind you, the steelworkers from the plant now being dismantled get some, some redundancy money from television when they didn't want me I got nothing up here at Ebervale the day I first came for Gosling's travels we had a rainbow oh. no rainbows in my redundancy these stones honor a fiery South Welsh MP who passionately believed in the welfare state and Irene Bevan as 
the minister, he created the National Health Service. And if that had been as it should be, maybe Bryn's cancer could have been spotted earlier and cured and I wouldn't have been left alone and in trouble. I could not sort things. The debt, the tax, I couldn't sort them at the time when Bryn was dying. owed to them, they have made enormous. And increasingly, my class, the self-employed, become more and more the norm. And so until laws are reformed, penalties removed, social security improved, what's happened to me? will happen to more and more. That's it now, top tail delivered within the budget to the BBC. Oh, we like it, said the BBC. Except um, the ending, Ray. <laughs> I didn't think they would like that. You see, what they wanted was an eviction, and I'm still here, just. You, you, my little friend, when you buzz off, I guess uh, one dawn they will swoop and evict me. My search was such a blind one. And I was all at sea I never thought I'd find one Quite so perfect for me You're a sweetheart If there ever was one If there ever was one It's you As I said at the very beginning, everyone must pay their taxes. 